So I truly think that with the biogas, the best, best solution in my book, I got this hat on because it got tons of deer flies. Best solution is really to uh, run a generator with it. You can run flames with it and cook with it. I mean, if, you, if that's what you need it to do is cook, you know, do that. But what I like to do is utilize as much as I can out of what I have. That's why if I run the generator, you can encircle it with the uh, copper coil. And use that heat from the generator to, you know, heat water. So you can heat water while you're generating power. Another concept I'm going to show you is the compost, which is in theory part of my biogas setup. So I take all my grass clippings and I just keep mounding it and mounding it. And what it does is creates energy, which is heat. So I got a thermometer and I just put these grass clippings in the other day. And it's, once you do that, it gets really hot really quick. So it's 100 and almost 130 degrees. So this tank is being, you know, constantly heated for a couple of weeks at, on end. So this little digester, which is a 55 gallon digester, gets all the influent. Enfluent is fertilizer. You know, you put something in, something comes out. So that's a little 25 gallon, which I have for years. And this is my big one. It's a little messy here. I mean, this is part of a mad scientist setup is messy. Yeah, I'll clean up one of these days. <laughs> that's why it's in backyard out of the out of sight kind of. So this is the big IBC tank that takes the brunt of the, the ground up food waste. And then any of the influent comes out, I put into, because I want to utilize any leftover gas I want to put in here to really break it down more. And then, you know, the end result with this will be more refined uh, influent and I'm still capturing gas, which this actually makes pretty good biogas. So it tells me that I still have, when influent comes out, I'm still utilizing that bacteria. The compost, which this works as a, a great setup here, is I've got tomatoes I planted up on top. So I put grass clippings up here last year, and I put a tomato plant in there, so I got little tomatoes. You see a little tomato plant right there. I got potatoes, I put potatoes in it, so I'm utilizing everything I can, I really am. Uh, so if you're an off-grid person, this is, I'm hoping this is helping you because this is a ton of information that I've just been experimenting with. I mean, you can you can do a lot of this really, really cheap. Um, I'm not as organized on how I do it, but it's, it's working. It really is. I've had a lot of help. And um, without the help, I probably wouldn't be where I am with this setup. So uh, Janice Kelsey, I'm going to utilize her name. She's been very helpful. Her in uh, Solar Cities with T.H. Culhane and Kathy Popper. They've all been really helpful in helping me create biogas in these great videos that I'm bringing to you guys. So encircle, encircle your digesters if you can. I mean, if you're in the back backyard or something like that where you're, you can do it and people won't get too upset, just cover it up with grass clippings, hay, compost. That generates heat and insulates it and keeps it warm because these digesters love heat. Um, the windows I can, what I'll do is I'll take those off. It just looks a little gaudy. And just keep covering it with, um, you know, straw and stuff like that because what will happen too is if you leave it exposed, uh, Mother, Mother Nature's gonna, you know, wreak havoc on it, it'll probably split the tank. So if I keep it covered and keep the sun directly off of it, I think that'll be the best option for the digester. I don't think they should be out, immediately out in the sun. They like the heat, but I don't think they like the sun directly on them. Check out, um, I've got tons of these videos up now about the biogas and how you build them. And uh, check it out, uh, comment below if you want, and I'll do what I can do to help. Again, this, this is a sinkerator grind up my food waste that goes in there. I use that generator that you saw. And uh, that's just a secondary gas chamber. This is a water one. So when that's full, I had this, this is all free stuff. So upside down trash can inside of a 55 gallon tank. And it works. Well, once it, that blue tank gets, or bag gets full, it pressurizes this and it lifts it right up. So there it is.